All right, so as I was talking about in class today um, and in the last video, that we were going to be doing more radical equations. Um, so for this one, I want to go over three examples that have some different things to them, but the same basic idea about um, solving equations with radicals is still here. So. The first one that's a little different that I want to go over involves two radicals being multiplied. And so what this one requires us to remember are some properties about radicals in multiplication. And so one of the properties we have is if for radicals is that if we're multiplying two radicals together, we can combine them into one square root or one radical by multiplying together what's inside of them. But this only works when the index is the same, meaning the little number here is the same. So if I go ahead and combine my two square roots into one radical, I've isolated the radical. I only have one to, to solve for. So I can square both sides to cancel out or to undo the radical, leaving me, and I'm going to FOIL this out, x squared plus 15x plus 44 equals 144. So now I can solve for x by moving 144 to both sides and we'll have minus 100 so that when we factor we get x plus 20 times x minus 5 so we would get x plus 20 equals 0 and x minus 5 equals 0 so negative 20 as well as 5 so again, just like before, we need to go back and check our solutions. So I'm going to always go back to the original problem, so before we've manipulated anything. So if we go back to the original problem, I'll have negative 20 plus 4 times negative 20 plus 11. And I'm checking to see, does that reduce to 12? So here I'll get square root of negative 16 times the square root of negative 9. Well, right here, I can't have square roots of negatives, so I know that negative 20 cannot be a solution. If I go to the 5, 5 plus 4 times, and then over here, 5 plus 11, so we'll get the square root of 9, the square root of 16, so that's 2, not 2, 3 times 4, which does in fact equal 12. So 5 would be our only solution here. So this one was a little different because it had us multiplying the radicals instead of adding. So if we were adding, we would have had to move one radical over, and then we'd have to square both sides to get rid of one, and then follow that process again. If your two square roots or two radicals are being multiplied, our radical rules state that we can combine them into one radical because of that multiplication. So make sure you guys are identifying the operation. So this right here, multiplication, is why we were able to do it this way. Okay, the next one um, is again something with a little something a little different. And this one has a square root inside of a square root. And so one thing we want to remember with square roots is that it's a grouping symbol. So if we um, start with the outside group and cancel that radical out, then we can work to the inside group. But we have to get rid of the outside grouping symbol before we can work on the inside. So to isolate a radical, this big one here, we already have it isolated. So if I square both sides, it's only going to cancel this outer one, leaving me with the square root of x plus 3 
equals, and then over here, remember we have to write it out twice and FOIL it together. So I'll have x plus 2 square root x plus 1 on the right. So now I need to get my radicals together. And what's great is that they're both just a square root of x. Sorry, that's getting hard for you to see. They're both just a square root of x, which means they're like terms. I can add the coefficients in front of them to combine them. So if I say, let's see, let's subtract the square root of x to both sides. And then I'm also going to move the 1 and the x to the other side as well. So I'll get 2 minus x on the left, and then 2 minus 1 gives me just root x, because they're like terms, because the radical is the same, so we just add the numbers in front. So now we get to square both sides again, That now that our other radical is isolated. So on the right, we'll get x, and then on the left, again, we have to write it out twice and FOIL it. So 4 minus 4x plus x squared. So now I need to combine all my like terms so that I can solve using factoring. So I'm going to move the x over. And I'm also going to rewrite this with x squared first. So I have something that I can factor with double bubble. So we have x minus 4, x minus 1. So we'll get x minus 4 equals 0, x minus 1 equals 0. So x will be 4 and 1. So those are our two solutions for x. But again, we have to go back and check because we want to make sure that these actually work. So again, we use our original, before we've done anything to it, equation. So I have my square root, my square root of 4 plus 3, I guess I didn't need to make that line that long, equals the square root of 4 plus 1. So inside my first radical, I'll get 2 plus 3, and then over here I'll get 2 plus 1. So square root of 5 equals 3. Well, that doesn't actually equal. So because these don't equal, this isn't true, so neither is this. Do the same thing with 1. So we have the square root of 1 plus 3. Does that equal the square root of 1 with the plus 1 outside? So inside, we'll have 1 plus 3 equals 1 plus 1. So square root of 4 equals 2. 2 does equal 2, so 1 would be our only solution. So the key thing to remember um, for this type when you see a radical and a radical is start by getting rid of the outside bigger radical. So get rid of the one that's on the farthest outside. And then once you do that, then start working with the ones on the inside. Um, and then again, just don't forget to go back and check using the original problem, because that's the one that's going to give us the most information as to whether or not it works. OK, there is one more that I wanted to go over that has a few differences to it. And this one, it has a square root of x plus 2 times the fourth root of x equals 15. So one of the first things that jumps out at me when I see this problem, I don't have the same radical. So in every problem we did in 2, 5 and the ones we've done so far, all the radicals have had the same index meaning they were all square roots or all cubed roots or all fourth roots. They were always the same index. These are not. So how do we handle it when they're not the same index? First thing I'm going to do when they're not the same 
is I'm going to put them as fractional exponents so that we can look at them like we did with the 2, 4 problems and the 2, 3 problems. So x or square root of x becomes x to the 1 half. Fourth root of x will become x to the 1 fourth. And then I notice that if I move the 15 over, I'll get x to the 1 half plus 2x to the 1 fourth minus 15 equals 0. So now it's similar to the problems we did on Mon or on Tuesday. So what I'm going to look for is a u so that I can um, substitute it in. And again, I always look at the fractions and which fraction is smaller, and I test that one for my u. So x to the 1 fourth is the smaller fraction. When I square x to the 1 fourth, so if I were to square both sides, this would become u squared x to the 1 fourth would become 1 half, which I happen to have right here, which means I can substitute u squared for x to the 1 half, and I can substitute u for x to the 1 fourth, and I have myself now a simpler looking polynomial that I can factor. So u plus 5, u minus 3, and so when I actually go to solve it, I get u is equal to negative 5 and positive 3. Now that's what u equals. We have to go back to find out what x equals. So again, we're only using what u equals here. So I have x to the 1 fourth equals negative 5, and I'll have x to the 1 fourth equals 3. So again, I notice I have an even index or an even um, root that I'm trying to take. Even roots cannot equal a negative number. So because it's an even root, I cannot have it equal negative 5, which means this is not a possible answer. So I come over to my other one. If I raise both sides to the fourth power, these will multiply together to become just x, and then 3 to the 4th is 81. And so just like before, we do want to check our solutions because we do have radicals in here. So if we were to check our solution, the square root of 81 plus 2 times the 4th root of 81, does that equal 15? So the square root of 81 is 9. Now the fourth root of 81, well we kind of just did that right here. 3 to the fourth is 81, so the fourth root is 3. So does 9 plus 6 equal 15? Yes, so that would be our only solution. So these last three here use the same ideas um, for solving radicals as well as solving with fractional exponents, they just started off looking a little different. So if you need to make a note to yourself, um, like a good spot to maybe make a note, because I know some people were still having issues here, you can make a note that says um, even index can't be negative or can't equal a negative number. So make those kind of notes to yourself so that way you have them um, down so you can remember them for when you're studying. Okay, so on Friday, we're going to be working on these kind of problems. So same kind of idea as the two five ones we did in class, but we're going to have more of these um, different situations thrown in there. Um, I do want you to put a star or highlight something like number two forgot to do that earlier. Number two is similar to a test question, so we really want to make sure we understand that one. So if you're confused on number two, please ask in class because I'm telling you it is a test question.